Welcome back to Canine Questions here on the Fenrir Canine Training, where we answer some of your questions that you've sent over to Rachel on Instagram. So she has randomly selected some questions. She's going to fire them over to me, and I'm hopefully going to help you guys out and give you a bit of information. Hopefully. Hopefully. So without further ado, let's not waste any time today. By the way, if you are new here, make sure you subscribe. That's the only time wasting we'll do. But let's get into the first question and delve straight into it. So first question um do livestock guardians make good residential pets residential pets i presume they just mean like in the home yeah in like a normal family environment yeah so livestock guardians are a they're a fascinating subcategory of guardian breed and it's a breed that you know i want a flock of turkish kangals eventually <laughs> And as much as I love Turkish Kangals, I don't have them now for a reason. And that's because we live in a normal, small little cottage in the countryside. and We don't have tons of room. Now, I've got the skill set required and I've got the time to exercise them. But I really do believe that Livestock Guardians thrive in being able to roam and having larger pieces of land to really be able to stretch their legs, go and have an observe. It's not that they need high levels of exercise i just think that they need kind of more high levels of mental stimulation in terms of tapping into that element of livestock guardians mm -hmm. and as a fan of working breeds i like to marry up breeds that can tap into what they were originally bred for so would you do you think that that means you need to have land in order to have one like if you've got land can they sleep in the house or yeah. do yeah. they like to sleep outside a lot of them definitely like to sleep outside again talking about our dream of me having our little farm to do our rescue and rehabilitation and we have a few kangles to protect the farm we build a nice little like well, i don't like the metal kennels but we do a cool little like stable type effect where they mm -hmm. would live outside and they'd absolutely thrive and love it my kind of this might be a little bit of tough love here but i would challenge whoever's asking that to why is it that you want that breed are you getting it for the looks of the breed and then you're mm -hmm. interested will i like the look of this livestock guardian however will it fit into my lifestyle then i would challenge that yeah and say that that's not the right way to look at it if you've got say a normal family environment and you've got like a half acre garden or maybe you live somewhere where there is lots of predators and you still live in a residential environment it's not really the case here in the uk but i have a lot of clients that have issues with like coyotes for example yeah. um then if they were to live outside i think that there's kind of a wiggle room there so i think you first of all need to be open and honest with yourself about why is it that you're choosing or want that breed mm -hmm. um, and if it's for the right reasons because you want to tap into what they were bred for why they were bred and then the temperament and characteristics that come from that lineage and history then there's things that you can do to make it work if you're doing it purely because you like the way they look and you can't af offer the lifestyle that they would traditionally fit in well with then i would challenge you and go back to the drawing board a little bit and if you have got that space and and those kind of things are they good with families or are they yeah so livestock guardians are tradition they're, they're very good with families because you'll remember traditionally they're bred to protect their flock and it's very easy for them to see their families as their flock where you might run into issues here is that they might children are a classic example of this they might consider children their flock and that's not the relationship that i like people to have or people's children to have with a livestock guardian okay. you still want to instill that leadership relationship yeah. so even if they haven't got that they can be very gentle with them very um, protective of them but it kind of they might not want to listen to them but like, yeah man, i'm here to look after you but you don't tell me what to do mm. uh, and i like to just kind of make sure that anyone i work with understands that and is capable of being able to manage that yeah so by the way guys if you wanted to know how you go about asking a question to get featured on this series that we're doing as Rachel is doing right now, she's trying to find questions on the uh, on her Instagram. So Rachel runs our Instagram. I'm terrible at social media. But, um, but what she does is she does one of those Instagram stories. You ask a question and then people can reply on the stories. Yeah. She saves them, chooses them at random and then asks me. So yeah, make sure you come and follow us at... 
Femre K9 leaders. At Femre K9 leaders, uh, <laughs> you can come and chat with us. That's the best it's place. It's good that you know yeah. your own Instagram handle. Yeah, well, I, I am on there all the time, but it's basically Rachel goes. I've got some DMs, Will. I need you to answer them, and she'll find <laughs> times where she can pin me down where I'm not working or, or um, thinking. Yeah, yeah thinking. <laughs> it's usually about one o'clock in the morning. Will answer these DMs while you're not doing anything. So you, that's the best way to come and chat with us, and it's all the best way to answer the ask the questions. I forgot um, the question now because you're talking for so I'm long. I'm waffling. King of waffle where's my waffle crown no one's made me a waffle crown yet but get to the second question okay (laughs) second question what should my family do for preparation before getting a future puppy oh i love that excellent question that right there that question is that's the answer yeah you've already done it that i wish everybody was asking that question if everybody was asking that question we would have no issues in the dog world because it's all about being proactive and preemptive and setting the dog up for success. Now, to set a dog up for success, we there's we could talk about that for hours around realistic expectations and about breed awareness and about your skill set and experience and training ability awareness. But basically, what you need to do is just do as much research as possible. And I kind of talk about it in my intros to all the videos because I do think that that's kind of the step-by-step process and it's something I believe in very strongly it's about choosing the right breed for you you can probably all chant this along with me now I've said it so many (laughs) times choosing the right breed for you becoming high level canine leaders that raise perfect canine companions so when you're preparing for a dog do your research study videos like this there's lots of other channels that do lots of excellent information search go on google there's lots of different quizzes we've got a quiz for perfect guard dog breeds but just do your research to choose the perfect breed for you that's stage one if you can get that stage nailed you're well on the way then do your research in how to become a high level canine leader now obviously i'm going to do a shameless plug here I would advise you check out our Perfect Puppy course over on femridogtraining.com. Before you've even got the dog, go through that course because that course is designed to teach you the theory and the overarching principles to make you a high-level canine leader rather than just me showing, look how good I am, try and copy along with what I'm doing. That's useless to anybody. But learn that information, learn that theory, be prepared with a plan. No, you don't have to follow my guidelines. I'm very proud of ours and we've got a lot of happy clients but find a process and a teacher and a trainer that you yeah. you resonate with and you like their style of teaching and just be prepared understand what they're asking from you and be prepared to be consistent be calm because if you're prepared then you're not panicking which makes you calm if you've got a plan you can stick to the plan which makes you consistent and if you're calm and consistent you'll be a good leader which again goes back to my thing that i'm always banging on about about being a calm consistent leader and again setting your dog up for success by being proactive and preemptive you're already 99 percent further along than most people that get a puppy on a whim and then they go oh now what and it's two weeks gone and bad behaviors are already established and they're pulling their hair out and then they have to come to me pleading for help and it's like, okay we can do that but you're starting yourself off you're setting yourself up to fail by that asking that question i'm genuinely incredibly proud of you and it says all i need to know about you and that you're going to be fine just keep up doing the work okay i think as well um possibly like they might want to know about what kind of things you recommend people buy before getting a dog yeah. i know i think you mentioned some of it in the puppy course yeah. it's one of the early modules I've, yeah there's a module in the just course if you about maybe just explain you a buy. little bit again this is something that i think people get too wrapped up in and there's it's like when you have a baby isn't it yeah there's so many choices and so many things you can buy and you're just like i want everything mm-hmm. i obviously need everything for mm-hmm. my child and it's kind of like that with dogs and actually in a way you're maybe better off waiting until you know what your dog likes right well there's definitely things that you need to have before the dog comes and then after that yeah you can kind of grow it the and that's what we're doing at Fenrir with our physical products so we we were discussing this the other day didn't we were like if i recommend that you should have this thing in place we want to create the best version of that in the world which means our range will be quite small because we don't need to do all the riffraff other companies can do that but that mandatory stuff we want to make the best 
versions of those possible and for that you need genuinely when you're getting a puppy i recommend you need a comfortable bed but don't go mental because they're probably going to destroy, destroy it, it yeah. so yeah uh, you can use a blanket or a towel to start with until they're not destroying everything and then you can get them a nice bed yeah. i highly recommend a crate or at least a playpen for confinement because it's that's really important um and again that's a whole other topic for another video but yeah somewhere for them to sleep that's warm and cozy a crate and a playpen you need bowls for water and food obviously whatever you're going to feed your dog you need some training treats um, and again we could discuss that at length for what that should be um, and you need a lead and i recommend usually starting with a slip lead depending on where you are you can get a puppy collar because you might need to have tags because identification is yeah. legal but other than that that genuinely is probably all you need to get started and then you can find out what kind of leads you like and work for you mm -hmm. whether you want to go down the harness route or a collar route or stick with a slip lead route um then what beds you can toys? go toys i always recommend a kong as well it's super secret at the minute but we're you've seen the designs haven't you very excited about a product we're bringing out that's going to um would that has been designed to be kind of the one-stop shop training aid and toy and behavior modification tool um and it looks amazing but my lips are sealed on that why copyrights and stuff go through but yeah, it's just something that they can chew on that can help with mental stimulation. Um, yeah. And again, a Kong is an excellent thing to do with that. If you get those things, you, you, you don't really need to worry about it too much. If you're gonna worry about something, research socialization, manners, developmental periods of a puppy so you're prepared for what's about to happen psychologically mm -hmm. um, and i'd focus on those obedience can even wait socialization and manners and kind of your rules and expectations and boundaries in the home that can't wait so if you want to do something before you get your puppy focus on researching yeah. those topics i also think i think it's a good idea to have established boundaries and like rules as it were for mm. your house so before you get the puppy decide where it's going to sleep if one of you wants it to sleep in bed and the other one doesn't want it to sleep it in bed you should decide that before you get the dog because it's not fair to change it yeah. after the fact the same with like going on the sofa is the dog going to be allowed on the sofa is it not those kind mm. of things i think it's good to have to have at least talked about that within your family before you get the dog because consistency is key yeah and everybody in the household needs to be consistent this is a fascinating topic let's keep um, let's keep talking about this this is <laughs> genuinely that was amazing you're having those kind of rules boundaries and expectations are incredibly important and like how babies are the same yeah. a puppy can very quickly cause grief within a relationship within a family and it will come from you having differing expectations and differing boundaries um you don't have to go as far as writing on a piece of paper and sticking it on the fridge but you certainly can but like in our house we have we don't mind the dogs don't come on the bed but we don't mind them on the sofa but, but they have to ask so with one of my training kind of rules and this kind of is a is an overarching principle and it's something we talk a lot about in the perfect puppy course of how to introduce this and and to kind of manage it but everything in that dog's life everything belongs to you it doesn't belong to the dog the dog has no rights it has no ownership over everything we want to give our dogs everything and we want them to have the best comfortable happiest life possible um we want to give them nice food and we want to give them access to nice clean water and we want them to have nice toys and a nice bed and be able to maybe snuggle on the sofa while you watch some TV. But everything belongs to you and you give access to everything that is good in that dog's life. And if you can maintain that overarching philosophy and you can have the discussion before the dog comes and make sure everyone in the household understands that, and the way I kind of describe it, the most simple way of doing it is before you feed the dog, they go into a sit and stay. You put the food on the floor and they wait until you allow them to have the food. That's a, a drill that we go through in the course. We do the same for access yeah. to the sofa. If the dog wants to come on the sofa, they learn that they have to come and they sit and they wait patiently. Sometimes, no, you're not coming on the sofa and they have to either, they can sit and wait there for hours if they want to, or they can take themselves away to their bed. But if we, because it's our sofa, we own it, it's the most comfortable place in the living room, so it belongs to us, 
and if you want to have access to it that comes through us again we can still spoil our dogs rotten and give them everything that we want but it comes through us and they understand that as leaders we own everything and we provide everything that's good um, again it's not cruel it's not harsh it's just a, if you can boil everything down and take that essence uh, into your relationship with your dog you can do that purely positively there's no corrections there is they and the people that do that from day one are the people that have the most success and the most success quickly so again that's an excellent at least conversation to have with the family before the dog comes there you go anything else he's told you everything about mm. getting a puppy and you're now probably so scared that you're not gonna get one <laughs> it's yeah it's <laughs> It's one of those things I like to say, it's not rocket science. And this is, again, not to keep banging on about the course, but that's why we designed the course originally, isn't it? Because people would come to me when I was doing more, obviously everything we do now is pretty much exclusively online, but people would come to me and they're like, there is so much out there. I need to do so much. I've got no idea, let alone how to do it, but when to do it, what to do it, who to listen to. And again, after like each individual piece isn't rocket science. It's actually quite simple. The trick is consistency. And that's what our course does. It's not a rocket science course. It's not going to teach you to be the dog whisperer and you can speak canine language and go into yeah. any situation and have... Or teaching them like really super complicated obedience and no, stuff it's like that. The fundamentals, it's breaking it down and letting you know what to do why we do it most importantly mm -hmm. and when to do it step by step and through that process so people can go all right all uh, i don't need to worry about all that for now i just need to focus on this okay cool yeah. we've got that nailed now i can worry about this and focus on this awesome we've got two things nailed now now it's time to focus on this and work on this uh, i think like, it's good that it's a year-long program as well because often you'll do like an eight-week puppy mm -hmm class or whatever so maybe the dog's like 16 weeks by the time that's mm. over and then then what yeah and i think right. most people just forget about it then mm -hmm. so. yeah i get that in right, a lot we, of my we can, are gonna shut up now you can sign off then otherwise i'm gonna get going again i'm on my high horse no go on you do the sign off no it'll be good for you it'll be i don't know what to say what do all youtubers say just say what all youtubers say don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below <laughs> you know all that i won't say nonsense but yeah it'd be cool if you subscribed it'd be nice if you subscribe if you are new here hope you found it useful instagram if you want to ask us questions rachel's gone everyone around. will be unsubscribing now <laughs> we'll unsubscribing we'll see you on the next episode of femro k now questions